Greetings, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation episode 113. I'm Jeff, and today we're checking out every new indie game releasing for the Nintendo Switch from May 2nd through the 8th. When we're done there, we'll check out the eShop deals to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. New episodes post to YouTube on Tuesday, and you can find us on your favorite podcast feed courtesy of our friends at the Nintendo Village. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to chat with us on Twitter or Discord, the links are in this episode's description. Now, as usual, a few games snuck onto the eShop last week without any warning. So to kick off episode 113 of Nindy Nation, let's first start by taking a look at the eight neglected Nindies that released since episode 112. First up is Street Cleaner, the video game. And I appreciate the clarification, you know, just in case you thought you had accidentally landed on the Amazon Video Store or something. It's an 8-bit action platformer by Creaky Lantern Games that looks like every NES game I used to rent back when I was a kid, and I mean that in a good way. It's got an assist mode to help you see the game through, and a hardcore mode if you want that classic challenge, and it launched last week for $12.75. Now, for better or worse, the rest of the neglected Nindies from last week are all games that I would consider Nindy no-nos. There might be one or two that speak to you, but as far as I'm concerned, the following eight titles come recommended by Nindy Nation under no circumstances. Eric Games put a spaceship in a purple tunnel, gave it lasers, and told it to blast all the things across six levels in Retro Space Fighters and launched it for $4.99. Mafia slots are the ladies in lingerie that hang out with a mob boss and, oh, I'm sorry, Mafia slots is digital game group's attempt at tricking your grandma into spending six bucks. But it just isn't the same without a pack of Misty 120s and her stories up on the TV, you know? Eric Games also publishes Jigsaw Tetra for 5 bucks with such features as Up to 256 puzzle pieces, music from various genres, and Lots of images you can choose from. <laughs> My favorite, though, is that this abomination is developed by Yazalum Technologiliri Limited Circetti. I'm giving Cubite Interactive the same disappointed look I give my son when I catch him eating dirt, because last week they published a $2 brawler called War Dogs Red's Return, and for whatever reason, all of the gang members have dog heads. Entity 3, that's a new one, had an awesome idea to take Super Monkey Ball and strip it of everything that makes it good with Skyroll for 5 bucks. They suggest you tilt your way to victory, but might I suggest instead taking the finger between your index and ring, positioning it in the direction of Entity 3, and tilting it into the upright and locked position. Yeah! Lightwood Games keeps publishing their Pogi games, this latest one being Letters by Pogi for $7.99. It tasks you to make words by changing one letter at a time. Fun. And finally, if you need another escape room game, On Skull Developments got you covered for five bucks with Escape First 3, which doesn't even make sense. Given that wonderful list of neglected Nindies, I guess my question to you is either A, do you think Street Cleaner looks cool? Or B, in a fight, who would win? One horse sized duck or 100 duck sized horses? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, strap in, citizens, because while there are some interesting titles coming up in the week ahead, there's also a lot more of what we just saw in the neglected Nindies, too. These are the 17 Nindies hitting the eShop from May 2nd through the 8th. On Monday, May 3rd, Spirits of Xanadu releases for $4.99. Developed by Night Dive Studios, who's released a bunch of great performing Switch ports, this is a first-person atmospheric exploration game with the stylings of an 80s sci-fi movie and visuals that call back to some of the early polygonal PC games. 
Makes me think of Fade to Black. Anyone ever played that one? In your world, this is just a couple of seconds after the last game's description, but in my world, I just spent the last half hour skimming through a long play of Fade to Black. Funny how that works, isn't it? Anyways, on Tuesday, May 4th, Auroch Digital publishes The Colonists for 2729, and it looks pretty cool. Imagine a cross between SimCity's management systems, the resource and construction aspects of an RTS, and the slice-of-life elements from something like an Animal Crossing. Throw in a bunch of cute wally looking robots, and that seems to be the gist of the colonists. I'm not sure why it's nearly 30 bucks or if it's worth that price, but I'm looking forward to seeing the reviews. On Wednesday, May 5th, we've got a few titles releasing with Asmodev and Ultimate Games getting the ball rolling with Infernal Radiation for $8.99. It's a 2.5D RPG adventure set in a world of demons and plague masks. The core gameplay is an active turn-based battle system that plays out kind of like a rhythm game. There's some interesting ideas here, but there appears to be a lot of jank too, so this is another one that we probably want to wait and see how it does. Boris the Rocket, on the other hand, looks a bit janky too, but it also looks like a good time. As the last mustachioed Cold War Soviet missile operator, your job is to protect Mother Russia by all means possible. Your time is split between a first-person survival adventure and gathering the resources you'll need to build and launch rockets to defend the homeland. It actually looks really fun. I love the two-pronged approach. It's published by Big Way, who recently let me down with BDSM, that's Big Drunk Satanic Massacre. What? It was on sale. You've all been there. And it's developed by Tor Studio. It launches for $12.74, which does include a slight discount, but just remember, in Mother Russia, eShop downloads you! (laughs) I apologize to any Russian listeners. I mean, come on, I'm an American. If you're looking for a completely different approach to the Soviet winter wonderland, coming right out of the How did both of these games end up releasing in the same week? category is Dole Grey by Sometimes You. It's a visual novel set in the Soviet 1920s and is inspired by the worlds of Strugatsky and Tarkovsky. You're presented with the same question over and over, constantly asking if you want to be a lamplighter or a tallyman. And for as weird as that sounds, the game has received quite a bit of praise. If you want to see what all of the fuss is about, it releases on sale for just $3.99. An easy recommendation for this week is the ridiculously cute, surprisingly excellent Save Me Mr. Taco Definitive Edition, which releases from Limited Run Games for $14.99. It's a remake of an action puzzle platformer, not too unlike the Kirby games, and one look at its Game Boy-inspired graphics should tell you why. The original released a couple years back and is absolutely a treat, and this new version basically fixes any concerns about difficulty or obtuse puzzles and gives it a Game Boy Color glow-up. 15 bucks might be a bit high for it, but throw it on your wish list for safekeeping. Then the relatively new contestant in the game show called Biggest Doll Stain on the eShop, also known as Game National, releases a 2-in-1 dash application driver and serial killer slash sniper for a buck ninety nine. Yeah, fuck that game. The big Thursday drop is not so big this week as games seem to be spread all over the place. But nonetheless, the sun rises on Thursday, May 6th with Cyberhive by Red Black Spade. Featuring the team responsible for lo-fi ping pong, Cyberhive features far more scantily clad anime scientists with bee stingers sticking out of their butt than I usually prefer, but the game looks pretty cool. It's a space opera that plays out to the tune of resource management, think Fallout Shelter, and includes some mini-games scattered throughout. It appears to have a branching narrative with multiple endings, and you can get your hottie girl with a bee butt fix when it releases for $9.99. For as much as I hear about Skater XL, Tony Hawk, Skatebird, and the elusive Skate 4, I'm surprised I've never heard of Skate City. Developed by Agnes and Room 8, this $10 game is a simpler, more chill approach to skating and takes place in a few real-world locations set to the tune of chill original beats. 
I wasn't too interested in the game until I saw that it was published by Snowman, and they're the ones that brought us Alto's Adventure and Odyssey late last year. Now you've got my attention. That's weird. This next game is called Beach Bounce, and it looks kind of like a volleyball game, so why is it asking me to confirm my age? Uh Uh-oh. Oh, no. Beach Bounce has nothing to do with balls, or, well, you know, not volleyballs. And the trailer is, uh, really something special. Ahem. You're spending the summer working part-time at your grandmother's understaffed beach resort. The only comfort is that all of the other staff seem to be beautiful young women. So it's not a completely wasted summer. Gamazumi releases this one for $9.99. Non-Guns Doppelganger Edition is this week's release by Digirati, and it just might have some of the grossest pixel art I have ever seen. Yet... I really want to give it a go. With a nasty take on the one-bit art style, Non-Guns is a super-fast 2D action game with guns that could even make Enter the Gungeon jealous. It releases for $14.99, which seems a bit high, but it is nonetheless a grotesque 2D shooter with procedurally generated dungeons, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! Hey, Techno Tanks! It's a top down tank combat game with neon Tron like visuals, and it releases by Epixer for $4.99. Techno Tanks! Hey, want to take a guess at what East Asia Soft's $6 game Poker Pretty Girls Battle Fantasy World Edition is all about? Yeah, you probably nailed it. If you're thinking, You know, I really like poker, but I just really think it could use more Japanese girls moaning throughout, and I mean, you know, gravity-defying voluptuous breasts couldn't hurt either. (laughs) Then my friend, this game is for you. And finally for the week, before we end on a couple of titles that might be worth considering, we've got a rock block of bullshit oh. landing on the eShop from PixArts, Benjamin Kistler, and Pretty Fly Games, which I think all might be the same company. I'm not counting these as games, and I'm not drawing distinction between who made what, because that'd be like stepping in a pile of dog what? and being more concerned with which dog actually pooped more than the fact that now you've got to scrape animal feces off your shoe. Speaking of which... My Little Fast Food Booth is three bucks if you hate yourself as much as old Benjamin Kistler does. For seven bucks, Total Arcade Racing suggests you use it to relive your childhood memories. But the joke's on us because if this is what anyone remembers from their childhood, (laughs) they probably didn't make it to adulthood. Ninja Epic Adventure steals a bunch of rip-off Mario assets and describes itself as three different types of games, proving even the publisher wasn't enough of a masochist to boot it up. Super Disc Soccer is a great way to spend $4 if you love the idea of circular country flags on a green screen. And Street Swap is the same Candy Crush clone we've seen every week since Nindy Nation started almost three years ago. Then we get some game called Flowing Lights, but it has no developer or publisher linked to it. It's definitely not worth 10 bucks, but it's this arcade shooter slash obstacle course with a neat little art style that kind of reminds me of what 80s movies thought VR would look like. Anyways, Rataleka's visual novel for the week is Winter Wolves Games C14 Dating. It's 19.99, and in addition to the dating stuff, it also mixes in some puzzle elements and mini games. The story centers around Melissa Flores, an archaeology student on an internship where she's searching for bones. <laughs> but if I know anything about these kind of games, which I don't, by the way, dinosaur bones aren't the only ones she's gonna find. Giggity. 
And then finally this week, Ultimate Games and Fox Dive Studio release Blink Rogues, a top-down shooter for $9.99. It doesn't look good at all, and my biggest question here is, how does this game take up over a gig of space? Because, I mean, look at it. Oof. The releases this week are like if you're going down a water slide and you're having a great time and then you realize that it drops you into the baby pool instead of the adult pool and you just know every toddler in sight has soiled themselves in the water that is about to wash over your body. <laughs> Why do I write these things? Mr. Taco is great, though, and both of the Soviet-era games should find their own audience. Non-guns could be a fun trifecta, and the colonists, while too expensive off the bat, might be worth checking out on a sale. Anything for you? Let me know in the comments. I don't want to end this episode on a downer, and with as slim as this week's release list has been, we're going to go ahead and jump into some deals. So even though finding light in this week's Nindy card catalog of crap was, uh, challenging, these are our picks for the nine best Nindies at their lowest prices ever through at least May 8th. From the indie that isn't really an indie category, no matter how you classify it, Child of Light was developed by a small incubation studio as a passion project inside of Ubisoft, and I think you should play it. It's a great first RPG if you've never played one, and it reads like a storybook with every sentence of dialogue in iambic pentameter. It's charming, the combat system is engaging, the exploration is fun, and right now it is 75% off for just $4.99. A completely different side-scrolling game, and one that is definitely not charming, is The Missing, J.J. McField and the Island of Memories. After your friend goes missing on a spooky island, you set out to find her in a world of horrifying things that want to kill you, and you learn you can't die. In this game, you actually have to do things like dismember yourself to solve puzzles, and while it's quite gruesome, it's one hell of a six-hour ride. Check it out while it's also 75% off for $7.50. If you like board games or you like solving engineering puzzles, you like trains, and you happen to have someone who can play a co-op game with you, well, that's a lot of qualifiers, but if those apply to you, go check out Unrailed, the awesome two-player train-based puzzle game that is currently half off for $9.99. You can play online or off with up to four players, but make sure you check this one out with friends for the best experience possible. One game we've discussed a few times, and I've always said, it'll be an easy recommendation when it's half off, is the Hong Kong Massacre. And my friends, I am happy to say it is now half off. With a Hong Kong Mafia story as the backdrop, you play through an isometric shooter that is loaded with slow motion diving through windows, kicking doors open, and sliding over the hood of cars while shooting all the bad guys in every direction possible. It can get a bit janky at times, and sometimes the difficulty gets way out of whack, but the gameplay is super fun, and this week, it's only $9.99. Zotrix Starglider was another game from a recent Nindies at Night stream that was fun to play, but hard to recommend at 10 bucks. It's like a modernized version of Galaga or Galaxian, and has some of the coolest implementation of HD rumble I've seen from an indie. Now that it's half off for $4.99, it is definitely worth checking out if you dig these retro arcade revivals. And the music's awesome, too. My personal favorite on this week's deals list is a game that is maybe as close to perfect as a game can get. Rive Ultimate Edition is really hard, and it plays like a twin-stick shooter mixed with a mostly linear platformer. It also happens to be drop-dead gorgeous and loaded with really funny one-liners from your space trucker protagonist. At two bucks, I'd recommend it to just about anyone, but if you like a challenge and you really like explosions, Rive is a no-brainer while it's 86% off. Another great retro revival of sorts is The Bug Butcher, and it's another game that is only a buck 99. It's a side-scroller where you enter a room and shoot upwards. That sounds simple, and it is at first, but before too long, it gets crazier than you could probably imagine. 
and the crazier it gets, the more rewarding it becomes. There's a ton of modes to tinker with and even more levels to explore on your own or in offline co-op, and it also has a great soundtrack that I'm probably going to use at the end of this episode. For something deceptively cute, look no further than one of the highest rated puzzle platformers on the Switch, Toki Tori, which is also developed by the team behind Rive, which is really weird when you think about it. This is another title that will give you about 6 hours of puzzles to platform your way through, and while it used to be 49 cents on occasion, with the new eShop rules, $1.99 is the lowest it will ever get, and it is well worth the price. And finally, one of my favorite $2 games to recommend is a great fit for anyone. Flat Heroes is beautiful for how simple it is. It's a game about reaching the single screen goal while dodging obstacles, and it's incredibly fun. It's filled with great music and is just as much fun for one player as it is for two, three, or four. You see anything you're picking up? If so, let me know. You can always leave your feedback in the YouTube comments, hit us up on Twitter, or chat about the games discussed today in our Discord. Links, as always, are in the description, and while you're at it, be sure to follow us on twitch.tv slash NindyNation to be notified when we go live on Thursday at 10pm Eastern to check out some of the latest Nindy releases. Otherwise, that's it for today. If you like what we do here, please give this video a like, subscribe if you want more, and share Nindy Nation with others. We'll be back here next Tuesday for more deals and new releases, and if you prefer to listen, our audio feed is available on podcast services thanks to our friends at the Nintendo Village. The Nindy Backlog Club episode for Guacamele will be live later this week, which means it's time to check out a new Nindy. With the excitement surrounding the announcement of Oxenfree 2 later this year, we're going to play through the 3-4 to four hour long original and share our thoughts over on Discord, as well as which ending we all got, which should make the conversation pretty fun. Next week is already shaping up to be something special, because we've got not only Subnautica finally releasing on the Switch, but Aerial Knight's Never Yield is also on deck, and I can't wait to play that one. But that's all for next week, citizens, and we're all done for today. Until next week, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 113, and remember, no matter what type of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.